podcast is entitled Overcoming Data Challenges in Oil and Gas. Digital solutions aimed at oil and gas will struggle against deep-seated data challenges that plague the industry. So, what can be done about them? I've been kicking around the oil and gas industry for a couple of decades, and in all that time, we've made only a little progress against the same data issues. Well, change is in the air because the next wave of business benefits driven by digital solutions will need to uh, solutions to these challenges. Oil and gas companies are going to finally step up to address the issues. Let's begin with the first problem, which is what I call data origination. Much of the useful data for oil and gas companies actually originates with their suppliers, that is, from the technologies, the assets, the services, and the equipment that the industry consumes. It's their equipment that has the sensors that create data in the first instance. However, suppliers often have structural disincentives to provide open, standardized, and easily accessed data for their customers out of fear that they will commoditize their offerings. Indeed, many suppliers aim to sell fully integrated offerings to their customers, consisting of tightly coupled product families that lock them in. These closed systems don't have the APIs or application programming interfaces for easy integration with other systems. For example, a downhole pump equipped with sensors may throw off lots of useful data, but that data is usually in a proprietary format, and the pump controllers lack the software smarts, either intentionally or unintentionally, to allow access to that data. Closed systems prevent owners from adopting best-in-class components and leading-edge technology into their structures. The next generation of oil and gas technology buyers are challenging the entrenched suppliers of technology to the industry. Future procurement specs for control systems will demand that they be standards-based, open, secure, and interoperable. The next data issue is around reliability, accuracy, and availability. Oil and gas has many legacy practices that make data hard to work with. First, the data is stored in separate departmental or functional silos in various incompatible formats with technologies and solutions selected with uh, narrow terms of reference. Frequently, the data is captured more as an afterthought than as an integral part of the business processes with little concern for anomalies or inaccuracies. Errors in the data make it less trustworthy, and over time, measurement devices can drift out of alignment with real conditions and require the occasional recalibration, which is a costly exercise. Engineers then spend considerable time just pulling these large data sets together, trying to overcome errors in the data to improve its reliability or sharpening its accuracy to reflect real operating conditions. Now, throw in a bit of organizational politics that slow everything down, plus a can-do and independent engineering culture, and not surprisingly, oil and gas data sets duplicate and multiply with abandonment, further clouding data reliability. The next problem is the variety and the volume of data which is accelerating. Oil and gas data shows the same two vectors as other data in other industries. Tremendous variety of data and enormous volumes, with one important distinction. Industry data is generally structured, that is to say it's tabular rather than unstructured. Think of pictures. This is what I would call large data rather than big data. These two vectors, variety and volume, have always shown robust annual growth, but they're now accelerating thanks to digital advancement. Next generation technologies such as autonomous kit generate more of the unstructured data and more variety. As sensors fall in price, they will appear on more kit, yielding more sources of data and generating yet more data themselves, more volume and more frequently. Oil and gas is already proficient at collecting and consuming large data. There are even pockets of capability in big data. Think seismic and map processing. But most oil and gas executives will readily admit that their companies are not very good at exploiting or analyzing data for insights and business improvement. The industry will need to step up its efforts to managing what is a rapidly growing and materially shifting data environment. The next big, uh, next big question around data is its value. Accounting rules play a role in determining how oil and gas companies treat their data. For example, is data free, as in no cost, and is data valueless? Take a look at any oil and gas balance sheet, and you will typically find just a few data assets. A good example might be seismic data, which is usually recorded at the cost to recapture the data, and not necessarily the value that could be released through the effective analysis of the data. In general, oil and gas entities do not record their data assets on their balance sheets with a value. Data is more associated with being a cost or an expense recorded on the profit and loss statement as IT cost, and is therefore something to be managed down. 
Expense items in business struggle to attract capital investment and talented people, and during the commodity down cycle, expenses come under intense cost pressure. While capital markets and accounting rules may block highly formalized valuations for data assets, managers can always create their own internal accounting metrics to promote the right kinds of behavior. The next data issue is data accountability. With all of this data, there would surely be clear accountability for stewarding that data. Well, yes and no. Accountability is diffused and shared in oil and gas. The most senior executive charged with managing commercial data is usually the chief information officer, who typically reports to the chief financial officer or perhaps to the senior vice president of corporate services. Her role is generally confined to the IT side of the business, that is, ERP systems, trading, email services, phone, and so forth, run the data center and the networks, adapt to technology advances, and provide cybersecurity. The chief operating officer will have accountability for operations technology, or OT, for running the facilities that extract oil and gas, process it, and transport it along the value chain. Some oil and gas businesses are more asset-driven and feature asset managers who will have accountability for OT for their assets, and probably no others. The VP of Exploration will have accountability for all the geology and subsurface technical tools for interpreting geologic data. This much diversity and accountability hinders the consistent management of data, introduces security weaknesses, and makes analysis of the business more difficult than it needs to be. So what's the net net of all of this? Well, when oil and gas prices are high and my margins are robust, the traditional approach to data management is dismissible as a minor cost of doing business. However, with this prolonged price down cycle, no more easily extracted costs and powerful new data-driven technologies on the horizon, this traditional approach is looking profoundly ill-suited to the future. So it's time to take some action, and what would I recommend? Well, faced with a large and growing mountain of data of uncertain origin that might not be original data, whose accuracy and reliability is questionable, that could be stale dated, and with promising digital tool tools coming next, where does one start? Well, begin by setting a strategy. If data challenges were just technical in nature, companies could simply purchase a fix or develop a hack and be done. But as I've set out, the challenges are much more complicated and the issues are devilishly interrelated. Therefore, companies need a more strategic approach. Data issues must be tackled more holistically, so the changes in one aspect, such as an agreement to adopt data standards, are not in conflict with another, such as a procurement policy that's based on least cost. A good strategy for dealing with data would include a survey of the key issues surrounding that data, a view as to what good data management looks like, and who are leaders in dealing with data. And the, by the way, the leaders might be outside of the industry. The strategy would set out the key goals and objectives for data, such as high reliability, low duplication, clear accountability, and so forth. A set of investments required to achieve those goals, those would be technical standards and procurement based, an organization and resources to own the data and initiatives, and a set of metrics to monitor progress. The next challenge is to figure out what, which data actually drives value. A good step would be to cut the mountain of data down to a more workable size, and that means quickly finding the data that matters. I would start with the development of an oil and gas value driver tree, which is a representation of how value is created in an oil and gas company. The tree helps identify what data contributes to value creation and what data is of lesser value. Once the drivers of value are clear, a value assessment can be placed on the data required to manage that driver. Managers in oil and gas can then properly allocate capital and talent based on the value of the data. Existing data sets that support the drivers of value can then be identified. Next, there's a need for analytic tools. In my experience, oil and gas companies are not short of analytic tools. Indeed, the opposite problem is more likely that there are too many tools to choose from. Diversity of tools is not always a good thing. Clever models built in one tool might not be leveraged in another. I would put all the tools into a tool library and let the power of crowd usage drive tool uptake. Last but not least, there's a need for a data repository. A big time saver is to simply make data assets more accessible. Instead of data assets being hidden away on server drives or departmental systems or inside ERP systems, data sets could be made accessible by being stored in one place, accompanied by their descriptive data, that is, their metadata. The metadata is key, as it enables searching, filtering, building relationships between data sets, labeling charts, providing references, and so on.
In time, new data can be made to conform to the agreed data standards, but such standards will be need to be agreed first. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.